Welcome to Washington. I'm Britt Hume. George W. Bush found himself campaigning this day in a state where not long ago almost no one, including his own campaign, gave him much of a chance. But the race in Illinois has tightened quite a bit since then and was deemed worth a stopover on the way to Al Gore's home state. Carl Cameron has the story. Campaigning in suburban Chicago with exactly two weeks before the election, George W. Bush was asked about what's hovered over the 2000 race from the beginning, the scandals and impeachment of Bill Clinton. I don't think there's a lot of politics to be gained by talking about him. As a matter of fact, I think most Americans would rather move on. But in the next breath, Bush seemed to almost dare Clinton to leap into the campaign. Now, if he decides he can't help himself and starts getting out there and campaigning against me, the shadow returns. I may say something in defense of my record. Defending the governor's Texas education record consumed much of the Bush team's day. Reporters received overnight packages from the Gore camp with an issue paper by a Rand Corporation researcher who said the Texas education miracle is a myth. Bush aides called the paper politically timed and dead wrong. This 14-page opinion paper, which is not officially endorsed by the Rand Corporation and comes two weeks before the election, directly contradicts every credible, nonpartisan, scientific evaluation, including Rand's own official study, all of which concluded that students in Texas and North Carolina lead the nation. Bush had wanted tax cuts to dominate his message on this day. Charging that Gore's targeted tax cut plan leaves out 50 million Americans, Bush ridiculed Gore's plan by asking folks if they qualified as Gore's targets. How many of you own a rooftop photovoltaic system? If you had one, you'd get tax relief. There's a lot of talk about the death tax. Let me ask you this. How many of you plan to materially participate in the operations of your small business five out of eight years before your death? And will your heirs pledge to materially participate for another 10 years? <laughs> then Bush turned to his plan for an across-the-board tax cut. How many of you all pay federal income taxes? You get tax relief. While Bush wants to maintain a disciplined and critical message against Al Gore in the closing days of this campaign, aides say the RAND issue report on education is no distraction because the author of the report says it was only a hypothesis and not a scientific conclusion. And as for any distraction from Bill Clinton, Bush aides say it may be more of a problem for Al Gore. In Knoxville, Tennessee, Carl Cameron, Fox News. Vice President Gore, meanwhile, continues to send much of his, much of, spend much of his time in states which he and Bill Clinton carried twice, including his own home state and President Clinton's. It isn't where he hoped he would have to be at this late stage of a race, but in politics, you go where you have to. Correspondent Jim Angle went with him. Still struggling to round up states that usually vote Democratic, Gore opened the day in Bill Clinton's Arkansas before heading to his own home state of Tennessee. In Little Rock, Gore started the morning visiting with a the family, then walked to school with the kids, picking up a few others along the way. Later, he tried to get those of voting age to follow him as well. I am here this morning uh, to offer a tale of two candidates, two candidates with two very different approaches to government. Gore tried to deflect one of Governor Bush's charges, which is apparently sticking, that Gore envisions a massive expansion of government. Gore insisted he's against big government. In this tale of two candidates, I'm the one who believes in limited government. And I have believed in it long before it was fashionable to do so. And Gore demonstrated one of the oldest moves in politics. When your opponent is drawing blood with some charge, deny it, then accuse him of the same thing. So it was that Gore accused George W. Bush of being the candidate of big government. Governor Bush likes to rail against big government. Yet on his watch, the size of government in Texas has grown. And Gore argued that Bush would have to expand government in Washington, too, with his plan for individual accounts in Social Security. It would lead to the largest expansion of the federal workforce in many years, more than 50,000 new federal government employees. That comes from a study by a group called 2030, which is backed by organized labor and opposes private accounts. 
Then Gore went one step further to deflect the big government label. He promised a permanent cap on federal employees. As president, I will not add to the number of people doing work for the federal government, not by even one position. As far as the charges about the size of Texas government, Bush advisors say spending has increased 2.7% but say it went up 31% under the last Democratic governor. Ironically, Al Gore usually accuses George W. Bush of not doing enough in Texas. Now the vice president, at least temporarily, is accusing Bush of doing too much. In Shreveport, Louisiana, Jim Angle, Fox News. With exactly two weeks left to go before the election, two national polls show George W. Bush is strengthening his lead, while others show the race very close indeed. The Battleground 2000 survey shows the Texas governor eight points ahead of the vice president in a four-way race. The Rasmussen Portrait of America poll shows Mr. Bush six points ahead of the vice president, 47 to 41 percent. The USA Today Gallup CNN poll actually shows Mr. Gore with a one-point advantage, 46 to 45, in a four-way race. That, of course, the Gallup poll has been all over the place. But the Reuters Zogby MSNBC poll shows Mr. Bush two points ahead of Mr. Gore within the margin of error. Coming up, whatever happened to that tight Senate race in Michigan, it's not so close anymore. That story and the hot house races when we return. Presidential race, it's also the battleground in a fierce Senate race. After the primary, Democrats considered the seat held by Republican Senator Seth Abraham to be theirs for the taking. He, though, mounted a strong ad campaign against Democratic challenger Debbie Stabenow's prescription drug plan, which is identical to Al Gore's, and took the lead. But as Fox News' Steve Brown tells us, Stabenow is still fighting. Who do you trust to really lower the cost of prescription drugs? Someone who's been taking them on or someone who's been taking their money? Democratic Senate well, candidate Debbie plans. Stabenow says she's I'm been forced to mount a counterattack in Michigan against her opponent, Republican years, Spencer Abraham. That in my six years in the Senate, I've been able to have 21 laws enacted into law. My opponent, in her time in the Congress, hasn't had one bill become law. But Stabenow insists she's not getting beaten on the issues. Rather, she claims she's being beaten up by Abraham TV ads. Liberal on taxes, liberal on welfare. An Abraham advertisement blitz is on. The incumbent Abraham has spent more than $8 million this year, outspending Stabenow two to one. This latest TV ad blitz is proof in politics, money talks. Spencer Abraham has opened up a lead, but not so much by surging ahead himself as by driving down his opponent with negative ads on TV. Just four months ago, Abraham was the one in trouble in a dead heat with Stabenow. But now, political analysts say thanks in part to the negative TV spots, Abraham has jumped out to a comfy lead between 9 and 15 percentage points. Hi, how are you? You're working a tough crowd. Oh, this is hey, Republican. that's okay. That's okay. Good thinking Republicans. Stabenow blames her drop in the polls on Abraham's big money TV campaign. Abraham says it's not a about the ads, it's about the issues. Uh, I think in our state there's a growing realization that lower taxes, less government interference, uh, reforming welfare and balancing budgets make a difference. Stabenow is also hitting the airwaves now with negative ads of her own. Spence Abraham's real record? He cut college loans, voted against 100,000 new teachers, and wants to abolish the Department of Education. But with Abraham outspending Stabenow and leading in the polls late in this race, political observers say the once vulnerable Republican looks like he's on his way to his second term in the U.S. Senate. Literally Steve Brown, Fox uh, News. Uh, the, the Democrats are pinning their hopes on Election Day of making the Republican Revolution a short-lived victory. It took 40 years for the Republicans to wrest control of the House from the Democrats. The Democrats are hoping to change that just six years after they lost their majority. Oddsmakers expect either party to pick up a couple of seats at most. As Fox News' James Rosen tells us, that's why every race counts. Democrats hope this tradition will see the gavel travel in the opposite direction next year as speculation mounts about whether House Minority Leader Dick Gephardt will be taking the job of current House Speaker Dennis Hastert. I think if the election were, were today, uh, that certainly would not happen. And I think the trend is our way. Democratic strategists, however, view the current election cycle differently. Well, we believe there are 30 to 40 Republican-held districts in which Democrats have a shot. Uh, at the end of the day, Democrats are not going to win in all of those districts, but we're confident that we'll win the six seats we need to take the House back and then some. In politics, the safest bets are incumbents. In 1998, they won 98% of the time. 
This year, though, 34 seats have been left vacant or open by incumbents, nine of them Democrats, 25 Republicans. Former Congressman Bill Paxson led the Republicans' successful bid for House control six years ago. He says the GOP doesn't fear having to defend so many open seats. Throughout the cycle, we've heard that the Republicans had to defend all these open seats. The fact is every independent analyst now says that most of those are home free for the Republicans. Still, a handful of tight races could make the difference. Among them, California Republican James Rogan, one of the House managers during President Clinton's impeachment trial, faces the fight of his life against Democratic challenger Adam Schiff. Also in Los Angeles County, freshman Republican Stephen Kuykendall wants to keep former Congresswoman Jane Harmon from reclaiming the seat she held for most of the 1990s. Likewise, in Kentucky, Republican incumbent Ernie Fletcher hopes to keep Democratic former Congressman Scotty Basler from retaking the seat Basler left two years ago. Also in extremely tight matchups, Democrat Rush Holt of New Jersey and three-term Indiana Republican John Hostetler. With either party's margin of control in the House likely to be so slim and the Senate likely to stay in Republican hands, the real winner looks once again to be gridlock. In Washington, James Rosen, Fox News. If Mel Carnahan wins the Missouri Senate election posthumously, his widow would be asked to serve as his replacement. Carnahan was killed last week in a plane crash in the midst of a tough campaign against incumbent Republican Senator John Ashcroft. Democrats are urging people to vote for Carnahan despite his death so the state's Democratic governor could pick his replacement. Mrs. Carnahan has not said whether she'd be interested in the job or not, but Governor, acting Governor Roger Wilson says she is his top choice. This is one of the strongest people that I have ever met. And I've seen her under fire in some of the most stressful situations that a person could be asked to handle, and she has never faltered. Coming up, are some of those battleground states now beginning to tilt George W. Bush's way? We'll ask U.S. News & World Report's Michael Barone. Coming up next. And indeed, several polls now show the presidential race narrower than at the end of last week. The Bush campaign, meanwhile, radiates confidence. So who's right? Sometimes you can tell by looking at where the candidates are going to see who's trying to shore up his base, who's trying to expand his. For more on the state of this race, we turn to the man who knows more about more states, who's been to every congressional district in America, the one and only Michael Barone, senior writer at U.S. News Report, uh, U.S. News and World Report, and co-author of the Almanac of American Politics. Welcome. It's always nice to be with you, Brett. How do you see this? Well, uh, is there an uptick or a tightening? I mean, if you want to take a look at the national polls, I think you could say that Al Gore may have gained a point. That's really more precision than national yeah, polls give you a plus or minus error. Battleground, battleground, that's the uh, go as Celinda Lake uh, bipartisan uh, Which poll. was one of the two polls that was closest uh, at the end to the 1996 result. Uh, that Reuters, MSNBC, that's Zogby. He was close in 96, He was too. one of the other two that was close. Those races both show Bush, one with a bigger margin than the other. Uh, CNN Gallup, that's been all over the lot, Brett. A few days ago, they had Bush up by uh, 9 or 10 points. Right. Now they're showing down. Uh, I think that, that the wobble on that poll has been so big that one wants to take it with several grains of salt. Uh, it is the first one in a while to show an Al Gore lead, obviously not significant at one point. Uh, ABC were running even. Rasmussen, uh, which, who conducts his polls by uh, uh, yeah, automated, automated, phone, automated phone things. I mean, if you average all those together, you come out with George W. Bush 45, Al Gore at 43. Uh, I think that reflects roughly where most people think the race is. If you eliminate the outliers, you probably have a little bit better uh, margin for, uh, for, for uh, now, George all, W. Bush. Now, as everybody knows, these things are done, obviously, the race is tallied on a state-by-state -state basis to, to get the majority of the Electoral College. What do you see that's noteworthy out in, these, in the states? Well, what we've seen in a number of states is states that were thought to be solidly Democratic, either on the basis of performance in 92, 96, or because they went for Michael Dukakis in 1988, uh, seem to have been tightening up. And I think one major example here, the state of California, Public Policy Institute of California, nonpartisan group, came out with a poll showing at 44 for Gore, 39% uh, for George W. Bush. That's Gore down four points since their most, their, their most recent poll in the same outfit, Bush even. It doesn't show great Bush strength, but it's got the Gore people nervous. Gary South is the chief political operative for Governor Gray Davis, Democrat. Right. Uh, gave a public speech where he said the Gore campaign better get in here, they better spend more money, they better do more things. Uh, the Gore campaign so far hasn't put more money into California. They're evidently trying to save it for other places like Tennessee, where Gal Gore's home state, where they just doubled uh, their spending. Obviously, not a sign that they think they're in great strength in Tennessee. Uh, but that California leads to the tantalizing possibility that that state might be in play. Also, 
There are five House seats, four held down by Republicans that are seriously contested in California. The Bush campaign has been putting money in there, something like $8 million over a period of the last several weeks. Uh, that seems to be paying off for them, at least tactically. Hmm. Now, let's look at some of these other states. Um, there's been considerable interest in um, states like Wisconsin, which that ought to be a Gore state. Well, Wisconsin has the old progressive party tradition of Robert La Follette. It was for Dukakis in 88, for Bill Clinton in 1992, for Bill Clinton in 1996. Public Policy Institute of Wisconsin has got a public poll out 4940. Yeah. Now, I think the Bush and the Gore campaigns would both argue that there's not that big a margin, but there does seem to be evidence that George W. Bush may carry this. And Britt, is, that I the, is that the Nader vote that's hurting Gore in there? Uh, well, the Nader vote, but you got 89% in that already. I think what's hurting him most, and you can see this in some of these northern tier states with the North Country vote. You can see it in some of the mountain states where the ancestral Democratic, the rural counties, one of the areas where the Democratic Party's lost strength, Republican Party has gained during the Clinton Gore Perot years, has been uh, these very rural counties where the Democratic liberal agenda on cultural issues, which works for the Democrats in places like Los Angeles suburbs and New Jersey suburbs, works against the Democrats. In the, in the north country of Wisconsin, that is historically a Democratic area. It was for La Follette. It supports uh, Congressman Dave Obey the former chairman, now ranking member of the Appropriations Committee, one of the most talented and dedicated liberal Democrats in the House of Representatives, represents that area. But it appears that some of that area, the Democrats aren't getting their votes there. And I think it's some of the cultural issues, the general tone of the Gore campaign, the gun control, gun control issue, was, which yeah, everybody, I guess. Yeah, every, so many people in the press thought that uh, this was going to be an issue that was going to work for the Democrats across the country. I dare say in northern Wisconsin, northern Michigan, northern Minnesota, all states where Bush has shown a lead in states that used to be carried by the Democrats, that issue is working for the let's Republicans. Take a, let's take a look at Michigan, which has been sort of con considered kind of yeah. the battleground of battlegrounds. You got an interesting result there. Well, I think that's right. When you start looking at a race where you're talking about the poll margins coming in a difference of tenths of one percent, where the error margins plus or minus four percent, Michigan is really seriously contested. Governor John Angler, is, uh, the Republican governor, has gone on the war path in the last couple days talking about automotive issues. The Detroit News and editorializing in support of George W. Bush mentioned, you know, he said they took the passages from Al Gore's Earth in the Balance, where he talks about zeroing out the internal combustion engine and so forth, and said this would be disastrous for the economy of the state of Michigan. Drew distinction between Clinton and Gore, saying Clinton is not as extreme as this, and Gore would be. Uh, you know, this is a state where. Uh, George, uh, where Bill Clinton ran three points above national average in 1996. He had some additional strength there that he didn't have in the rest of the country. Al Gore has been, strug has been holding on to very narrow leads. This looks very close now. The Republicans believe they're ahead. I think the Democrats believe they're ahead. Uh, no, it is a tie. It's, it, it, it's as much of a tie as we can see. And in the three elections before 1996, 84, 88, and 92, Michigan was right with the national average on each of the Now, uh, finally, candidates. one state that certainly appeared out of reach for quite a long time for Mr. Mr. Bush was Pennsylvania. It was a double-digit lead for Gord, persisted for weeks and weeks. What's happened there? Uh, what's happened there is that we're looking at, uh, uh, this is a poll by Public Opinion Strategies. Should be noted that's a Republican polling firm. It's a reputable firm, uh, but they're not likely to release their results if they favor the Democrat at this right. stage. Uh, they show a 45-43 edge for, uh, for George W. Bush. Other polls have showed roughly even or a two-point gore edge if we go back a couple of weeks. Uh, this, again, is another seriously contested race. And, uh, interesting. It's one of those issues where it's one of those states where abortion and gun control, which the Democrats thought were going to be such great issues for them nationally, probably work against them in the state of Pennsylvania. I mean, both parties, Senate candidates in Pennsylvania, are against abortion uh, in in most cases and circumstances. And this is a state also where you've got the I think the nation's largest or second largest number of hunters. And so Pennsylvania helps to explain why we saw Al Gore in the second and third debates saying plaintively he's not going to take guns away from hunters. hunters right, he's right. thinking Pennsylvania and Michigan on this. Is it your sense, Michael, that there is at this mo moment no clear drift or direction in this race? I th this, this, race this race basically over the last week seems to have stayed about even, and in the same range it was between April and July with Bush ahead by several points. All right, Michael Barone, great to have you. Thanks very much. We have to take a quick break for some news headlines, but when we return, find out why Senator Joseph Lieberman is in trouble, and how much trouble, with some Jews. We'll be right back.